So what you'll find when you open up your ice maker, all contained in the bucket, are the use and care manual and installation here, uh, product registration card, a chrome scoop for uh, scooping the ice out. We include a five foot braided steel hose, which uh, immensely helps with kinking, and the tray, which fits inside the base of the uh, bucket, and an additional cap and plug for the, um, the bucket gets installed at the rear in the event that you need it and an additional hinge for switching the swing of the door. So that's all included in the bucket and can be set aside uh, until you require it. Okay, so what we have here on the back of the unit uh, before you go through the install process is the pump switch which comes in the off position the water inlet, drain pump outlet, and the continuous drain outlet. Now, both of those are capped. If you remove one and put it back on, it is very important to ensure that the, the silicone gasket is within the cap so that it creates a tight water seal. So, uh, to do the installation and the water supply, we recommend you use a high quality ice maker kit that incorporates quarter inch copper outside diameter line, as you can see here. So we recommend that you follow all plumbing codes in your area and use certified plumber to do the install. As you can see here, we've connected into the PEX line with a T, uh, T connector and use quarter copper inch OD line to a manual shut off, which is very important in the event that you need to turn the water off to your ice maker, you have the ability to do so. And then use the quarter inch copper line that feeds water right into the ice maker. This unit has three options for drainage. Why do you need drainage? Because the ice maker is not a freezer. It hovers just above zero or 32 Fahrenheit and the ice will melt slowly. So if you're consuming the ice frequently, there will be very little melt water. But if the ice stays in there for several days, melt water will accumulate in the bucket uh, if on manual drain. What is manual drain? Manual drain simply means that the bucket is capped and it has to be manually emptied either into a sink or drained into a secondary bucket. So how that is set up is it comes installed with the plug and the cap on the front, factory installed. On the back, and you'll know it's the back because of the label, you'll have to insert the silicone plug first and then screw the cap on after. Very important that the bucket be put in correctly, otherwise it could result in leaks. So that's why you need to put the back at the back of the unit. So as the ice melts, water will accumulate in the bucket. You can determine how much water is in the bucket from the window gauge here, and then you can simply pull it out and empty it into the sink, or if you don't want to remove the bucket from the unit, is just to remove the front cap. And the silicone plug and the water will come into the receptacle. Once you've finished draining, manually draining the bucket, it's very important to make sure you put the plug back in and the cap is securely fastened onto the threads. For the other two drainage options, which are continuous drain or uh, using the pump, it is important that there is no plug or cap on the rear of the bucket. This is the way it comes from the factory, so there should be nothing here to impede the flow of the water into the unit. As mentioned with the uh, plug being left off the rear of the bucket, there is a small drainage hole in the back of the unit. This will drain into a secondary reservoir underneath the unit and the water, depending on how uh, the unit has been set up, will either use the continuous drain to drain into a floor drain or it will use the pump that is incorporated into the unit to pump into an EBS drain pipe. So in this configuration, we're using the continuous drain or the gravity fed drain. So the water that collects in the lower reservoir inside the cabinet drains out through this hose to a floor drain. So the floor drain has to be in close proximity to the unit and gravity will take care of it and it will just trickle out as needed. So this is configured for the drain pump option. So the drain pump comes built into the unit and the water line feeds water into the unit. The melt water from the bucket goes into the reservoir and will be pumped out through this drain hose which is connected under the sink to an ABS pipe. It is very important that you turn the pump on through with the switch 
uh, before you put this back under the counter. So the final step is to connect the drain hose to an ABS pipe. What we've used here is your standard ABS dishwasher connector and a threaded plastic uh, elbow to connect onto the braided steel hose. Um, and this would only be used in pump mode so the pump can force the water out. If it's in manual drain mode, you need to maintain at least a three or four degree slope to the floor drain and prevent any kinks in the hosing in order to prevent any um, the water from backing up. Included with the purchase of your ice maker is a chrome scoop and a post to hang it on so you've conveniently got it inside the ice maker and don't lose it. Um, the scoop is great for either scooping the ice or helps breaking up the sheets of ice as they're ejected from the ice maker. There are three cube densities, small, medium, large. Essentially uh, what that means is the interior of the cube fills in. I strongly recommend that you would use the large uh, cube size here. Uh, it'll give you a fuller, larger piece of ice uh, for your beverages. This is how it would look. Occasionally there'll be some small splash out of droplets of water. Completely normal, completely part of the way the unit is intended to function. So once we remove the splash guard, this is the process by which the ice maker makes ice. Water is pumped into the reservoir through the hard water line which you just installed. And then from there, it's pumped up to the shower head and cascades over the evaporator. Bit by bit, the water will freeze until it forms a complete sheet of ice. Once complete, the evaporator will warm slightly and the ice will be ejected into the bucket. So, reservoir, shower head, and evaporator all work together. It's common to hear the water noise with this unit. Um, it doesn't mean it's pumping extra water, it's just circling the water over and over again to form that sheet of ice. Um, any water that ends up in the drain gets pumped out to the, uh, to the drain hose as we set up earlier. Once again, it's very important to keep the splash guard in place to minimize any splash out and risk of leaks from the unit. And again, once the door is closed, you will be able to hear the water sound a little bit and that is perfectly normal. Now we're going to talk about cleaning the ice maker. The frequency with which the ice maker needs to be cleaned is really a facet of how frequently you use the ice maker and how hard the water is in your area. To uh, drain the unit when either you're not using it for the purpose of cleaning, you press the power button for three seconds to put the unit in standby mode. So, step one of the cleaning process is to remove the ice maker and dispose of any ice that you already have made. So you can either freeze it for future use or dump it into the sink. So the next step is to drain the reservoir of the water. So the next step is to refill the reservoir with uh, three cups of water and three cups of vinegar or extra strength vinegar. This is the vinegar and we're going to pour it into the reservoir. Once you've applied the uh, vinegar to the reservoir, you let the unit run and make seven, eight batches of ice. Uh, and once that is complete, discard the ice. Then you put the bucket back in and let it make another five, six, seven batches of ice. Discard those and you should be good. Once the vinegar has been put in and seven or eight batches of ice have been produced, what you do is turn the unit off again or put it in standby mode. Discard the seven or eight batches of ice that you've made. Now you're going to drain the ice bucket or the reservoir for a second time. And what this does is it removes any of the vinegar water solution from the reservoir and allows you to start with fresh water. So customer service tip, if you ever have a problem with your ice maker and you need to speak to our customer service department, you can find the model and serial number located on the label to the left side of the unit. So you don't need to pull the unit out from under the counter. You can get the model and serial number right off the uh, label inside the cabinet.